Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about Delta T as it pertains to pulling a refrigerated trailer. So we're going to talk about Delta T, what it is, how it works, and why you should bother to care. All right, now this only really applies to you if you if you pull a reefer trailer, but it's good to know because you never know what you're going to do in the future. Uh, maybe someday you'll own your own reefer trailer and uh, it always helps to know how things work. So <clears throat> Uh, incidentally, I'm doing this inside. I did the video outside and the sound quality was just awful trying to do it next to a running reefer trailer. So uh, we'll just piece in some video here and I'll voice over it as we go. Now, uh, basics, uh, if you don't already know, you probably already know how reefer works. Uh, cold air comes out the top of the unit there, out through the chute, goes to the back of the trailer, hits the back doors and comes down and comes back through the grooves in the floor or through your pallets or whatever to the bottom of the reefer and uh, repeat the cycle all over again. So it's just going to be a continuous loop of cold air. Uh, if you get the right load or circumstances or whatever, you may load a load and set it to, say it's a minus 10 degree load, and you load a trailer and the temperature is just not coming down. So you're like, oh crap, you know, what's going on here? Why isn't, uh, something's wrong with my reefer? You know, I immediately need to take it in. Well, knowing Delta T can help you figure out where the problem is and what's going on. All right, and it can be a few different things. So this is the process of elimination to kind of figure out what's going on. So what is delta T? Delta T is the difference in temperature between your discharge air, uh, Thermo King and Carrier call it two different things. One calls it discharge air, one calls it supply air. So it's the difference between that and the air, the return air. Okay, so the discharge air is what's coming out and the return air is what's coming back. All right, now there'll be a differential between those two temperatures because you're going to lose temperature, right, on the way, and that is called the delta T. So let me uh, so here's a video. This is of a Thermo King S600 unit. You can see the set point is at minus ten. And the box temperature is at 33 degrees. This is an empty trailer. I was just cooling down uh, to, to check the operation here. So how we're going to see Delta T is press menu. And then we're going to toggle down to sensors. And push the enter button, select. All right, now it's going to go into sense, read some sensors here. The first one it reads is return air temperature. Look at that. The return air temperature is 33 0.5 degrees, that's about what our box temperature is. And then we'll just push the down arrow and then we go. And then we come to control discharge temperature. So that's your discharge temperature is 21. Now the difference between 21 and 33 is right here, minus 12 degrees. So we're 12 degrees lower in our discharge versus our return temperature. So we're right now we're running a minus 12 delta T. So first, let's talk about what is a good delta T. Minus 12 is, it's okay. It's it's not good or bad. It's probably average. Um, I've seen, you know, all the way to, you know, better than a minus 20 delta T. And there's times where you'll see a delta T of maybe minus 5, minus 4. And, and that's not necessarily bad. We'll come back to that in a, in a minute here and explain why you would only see that in certain circumstances. You're going down the road, say you've got a carrier unit, and all of a sudden you see that scary yellow light and you look back and it says box temperature out of range because you're set at minus 10 and hey maybe you're at 20 degrees or whatever or you load a trailer and the temperature just isn't coming down well a few things can be going on your reefer could be malfunctioning not putting out cold enough air okay so if we look at the delta t and we see we are set at minus 10 and the discharge air is uh, 20 degrees right? The box temp is 33 degrees. We know that the reefer unit is putting out cold enough air to try to cool that trailer down. So the reefer unit's actually doing what it's supposed to do. So we can kind of rule that out, okay? And then what do we come back to? Well, we want to check for major air losses, leaks, okay? Around your doors, your door gaskets. It's a good idea every once in a while to climb in your trailer and have somebody close the doors on it and see if you can see daylight around the around the door gaskets, right? Or if you got a load on and you can feel cold air coming out around your door gaskets, you're, you're losing a lot of temperature uh, out the back of your trailer. When you have a frozen load, it's a good idea to plug the drain holes. Okay, so that's the next thing, Tech. Are we losing a bunch of air to where 
um, we can't achieve temperature because we're just losing too much cold air. All right. Uh, if you're driving down the road and all of a sudden, I mean, did your vent door pop open and you're just pushing cold air out the back? Uh, you know, when you got loaded, did somebody punch a hole somewhere and, and, and you're leaking out? God forbid that that happens. That should never happen. But uh, the moral of the story is you look at first for air leaks. OK. And then you got to think, OK, well, am I running a, a 20 year old reefer trailer down the road here that's lost its R value? So it's 100 degrees outside and I'm trying to cool a load to minus 10. And this, our value in this trailer is just shot and the, 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 the heat penetration from the walls and the roof are just making it so that my, you know, my unit can put out all the cold air at once, but my trailer insulation shot and I, and I can't keep up here. Uh, that, that can be an issue. But the one we really want to watch out for is the product. Okay. So if this load is supposed to be at minus 10 degrees. And they loaded on you. Maybe it wasn't fully frozen. They loaded it too soon, or they're just being shysters and saying, "Nah, we'll let the reefer take care of this." And they loaded on you at 15 degrees. Well, that load is going to, you know, that discharge air. It's going to suck temperature out of that. You know, it's trying to achieve some thermal mass here of, of cooling down that product. It's gonna, it's gonna pull temperature out of that air, and the air is going to be warm. You know. And, and as it cools the product, that temperature will creep down. You return, you return air. Maybe right now you have it set at minus 10 and your return air is, is 5 degrees. Well, as you cool that product, it's going to, that return temperature is going to creep down to where it should be slowly but surely over time, depending on a lot of things, humidity, <coughs> outside air temperature and such. There's a point where this is this information is valuable here, and we'll get to that in a second. So, if you one one kind of load that is is famous for this and uh, something you really have to watch is melons. Okay, just uh, let's pick on watermelons here for a minute because they're famous for this. Chances are, if you load watermelons, you're loading them right off the field or at a, a warehouse, an open air warehouse in you know southern Georgia where it's 95 degrees outside, right? And watermelons usually transport somewhere around 55, 50 degrees, depends on where they want them. And you put that load of watermelons in your trailer, and those watermelons are 85 degrees, 80 degrees, whatever. So if you put that load in there and set it for, for 55 degrees, uh, that reefer is going to have you know, a hard time. It's going to take a while to come down to temperature. So if you set it at 55 for a while, it might run return air of 60 degrees, 65 degrees, because that those watermelons are are sucking temperature. I, I don't know what the word is for that. Uh, uh, there's a word uh, it escapes me right now. But anyway, it's taking the the temperature out of the air and returning warmer air. Okay. Uh, as you cool down the product, that return temp will creep down from 65, 62, 60, 55. So once you verify that your reefer unit is working well, you don't have massive air leaks and everything's good, it, 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 you'll come to the conclusion, they loaded warm product on me. All right, so this is something you should know ahead of time. You should be pulp temping these products. But uh, in the chance of you get to a receiver and have a rejection, you should know this information because you know you did your part. You know it's set temps right. Reefer unit was working, blah, blah, blah. Everything I did was right. They loaded warm product on me. Uh, it happens all the time, and when you when you know this, you can tell them, "Hey, uh, you're rejecting this. I want to know why." If you if you know this information, I'm telling them exactly what happened. They might think, "Oh, we're not dealing with your average dummy here. Uh, he knows what he's talking about," and uh, it might help your situation. Now, going back to in regards to delta T, I said minus 12 is it's okay. Sometimes it'll be minus three, minus five. All right, these, these reefer units are smart. They're intelligent. So if you put a frozen load on there at minus 10, that unit can scream all out and run as low a delta T as it wants to. Uh, there's a point you don't want to go too low. You're just icing up too fast. But anyway, it'll run, it can run a minus 18, minus 20 delta T. It doesn't matter because frozen is frozen. Now, if you look, put a load of produce on there at, say, 35 to 38 degrees, depending, whatever, it's not going to put out that cold discharge air because the reefer unit knows, hey, we're close to freezing here. And the set point is such that 
this product is not supposed to freeze. So if your set point is 36, 38, we're only going to put out 31 degree air, maybe, maybe even 33 degree air, because we don't want to put out cold enough air that we freeze the product, especially in the front of the trailer. It's going to be colder in the front of the trailer. So you got a set point, you know, right in there. Don't be surprised if your delta T is only minus three to minus five because the reefer knows not to freeze that product. Similar to your watermelon, okay? It knows it's struggling to cool that watermelons, but it's still not going to put out freezing cold air. You know, if your set point is 40, whatever, it's still not going to put out 20 degree air because it knows, hey, this is, a, this is a load that is not supposed to freeze. So that is why just because, you know, you're running a bigger or smaller delta T, not necessarily mean there's a problem. You first have to look at what your set point is, what the load is, how close your set point is to that freezing point. All right. Like I said, if it's, if it's a minus 10 load and you're, you know, above zero degrees, it should be, it should be running pretty hard and putting out a good, strong Delta T. Okay. And if it's not, then it's, it's, it bears further looking into to see why it is not. So that's pretty much what you need to know about Delta T. It is, it is good to know. It's good to know a lot of things about your equipment. And if you're a company driver and say, well, I, I don't care. I don't need to know. Hey, why not learn it anyway? You know, if they can save a service call for you or, you know, if you think something's wrong with your unit and you're going to put it in a shop when you could just look and say, oh, I understand. Here's what's going on. I don't need to go to a shop or you never know. Someday you might own your own equipment and it's good to know these things. You save yourself a bunch of money and it's knowing how things work. Now, Delta T can go the other way. So if you're on a, on a freeze protect load, say it's 30 degrees outside, right? And you want to or uh, zero degrees outside and you got a freeze protect load. So you set it at 55 and the, the reefer unit is going to keep dropping instead of climbing because it's summer and not winter. So if it's putting out 55 degree air and your return air is 40 degrees, that's a Delta T of a positive 15. It just goes the other way. Instead of a negative Delta T, you're running a positive Delta T. It just, you know, what you're trying to accomplish is to heat the product instead of cool it. So that is uh, normal also. Anyway, everybody have a great day and uh, we'll see you again next time.